celebrating a huge political victory. Senators are expected to confirm Judge Brett Kavanaugh today. Collins, Flake, and Democrat Joe Manchin all voted yes. Republican Lisa Murkowski joined with Democrats to vote no. I will vote to confirm Judge Kavanaugh. I could not conclude that he is the right person for the court at this time. The United States Senate will also be making a statement. Will the state that partisan politics can override the presumption of innocence? Or we'll reaffirm that in the United States of America, everyone is innocent until proven guilty. There's two choices, the Susan Collins way or the protester way. Who do you want to run the government? This man has been mistreated. This man has been subjected to a set of procedures that were designed to trip him up. More than 100 anti-Brett Kavanaugh protesters are arrested as demonstrations continue to rage throughout Capitol Hill. The mob was not able to intimidate the Senate. We stood up to the mob. We did the right thing for a good man. We are back with a Fox News alert. Mitch McConnell delivered for Donald Trump by delivering Brett Kavanaugh on this Saturday edition of Fox and Friends. That's a live look of the Senate floor because the cloture vote happened yesterday, which everyone was following. It passed. That means later on today, they tell me 4.52 p.m., so don't miss mm. it, is when likely the vote will happen to confirm the future associate justice of the Supreme Court Brett Kavanaugh, but yesterday, guys, and Rachel and Griff, thanks for being here this morning. You can call me guys. You know, guys. No, it's a colloquial yeah, term. I get Ladies it. and gentlemen, although Griff's not a gentleman, if you really <laughs> yeah. uh, You know, all eyes were on that, on that vote dude. yesterday. That's right. That's right. I mean, at 4.52 p.m., it's not just a vote. History will be made, significant history, and that is the, the, the confirmation of Judge Brett Kavanaugh, and it will be likely because of the actions of an unlikely senator, Susan Collins of Maine, who, following the lead, as we pointed out, of Lindsey Graham, decided that she is going to properly do her job, as laid out in Article 2 of the Constitution, to advise and consent on Brett Kavanaugh. Here is some of what Susan Collins said yesterday. Judge Kavanaugh has received rave reviews for his 12-year track record as a judge. We must always remember that it is when passions are most inflamed that fairness is most in jeopardy. I do not believe that these charges can fairly prevent Judge Kavanaugh from serving on the court. I will vote to confirm Judge Kavanaugh. That was a 44-minute speech. And by the way, you mentioned unlikely uh, uh, hero for the conservatives in this very important and crucial moment. She laid out the case for Brett Kavanaugh. And as she did that, reminded conservatives of all the things they may not like about Brett Kavanaugh. Um, and yet... Uh, Conservatives are rallying behind her because she truly galvanized That's, um, the vote. And it, w it, it was shortly after she delivered it that uh, Joe Manchin put out a tweet and then a press release saying that he would also vote yes. And this it. is indeed an extension of President Trump's style of politics of standing up to a mob and saying, no, right. let's bring in Mercedes Schlapp, White House Senior uh, Communications Advisor. Uh, good morning, Mercedes. Good morning. What do you make? I want to get just your reaction quickly to Senator Collins' speech. Well, clearly, for Senator Collins, this was a moment of courage for her. It was a historic moment on the Senate floor where she carefully laid out and explained the case for why Judge Brett Kavanaugh is the most qualified candidate to be on the Supreme Court. Uh, she, she talked about the importance of the fact that, look, there is a lot of this emotion that has surrounded this case, but there was a lot of foul play by the Democrats as mm -hmm. well in terms of what they did in concealing the letter um, for so long. Uh, we, he, she talked about the fact that when you looked at the evidence presented, it was clear that the facts were on Judge Kavanaugh's side. Um, at the same time, she talked about what really mattered as well, which is that of a man who has served our country for a very long time, 
who has uh, very good, solid uh, judicial opinions, over 300 judicial opinions written, and obviously has gone through a very lengthy process and an interview process in the Senate, uh, which made him clear and qualified to become the next Supreme Court justice. Yeah. So we, we, are, we are very proud of Senator Collins for, for speaking up in such a calm and prolific way. And it really shows that when you put the emotions aside and you put the fact that the, the, so many of these Democrats use destructive tactics to destroy the reputation of this fine man, uh, it's a moment of truth. Mm. And it shows that President Trump of course made the right decision in picking Judge Kavanaugh and President Trump stood by Brett Kavanaugh throughout this whole process. I don't know if any other Republican president would have done so. Yeah. Such a great point. It's a great point. He's taught Republicans how to fight, as Rachel has pointed That's out, right. all, all morning long. This was, a, as you alluded to, a nasty, nasty process. How much does this win mean to President Trump and to this White House to, to come through all of this? And at the end of the day, get that unlikely vote from Susan Collins. But you saw allies like Mitch McConnell and Chuck Grassley and Lindsey Graham boldly make the case. Talk about the meaning of this win for you guys. It, it, well, it's, it's such a huge win for the president, but not only for the president, but for the nation, for the American people, for the fact that when President Trump was voted into office, you, he laid it very clearly out there of who the type of nominees that he was going to be looking for. Uh, he, 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 he distributed that list wide. And so because of the fact that it is for President Trump, as Senator Collins has said, he's the one that gets to choose based on the, uh, on the philosophy of these, uh, of these judges. Uh, it's been a win, but there's been several wins. I mean, not only do we have two Supreme Court uh, justices, uh, ho you know, hopefully now with the vote uh, later today, but you're talking about over 26 circuit court justices that have, uh, judges that have been confirmed. Those are huge successes when it comes to, to the judicial system. Absolutely. It allows us go back to go back to where you're talking about strict constitutionalists and the fact that we're able to rebalance uh, the, the court in that way. Mercy, has the president spoken to Brett Kavanaugh yet since um, yesterday? Uh, the president did speak with Brett Kavanaugh. Uh, I know it's one of these moments, again, that I'm, I'm incredibly proud of, of working with this president who has stood by Judge Kavanaugh, has really made it a point to explain to the American people why Judge Kavanaugh is the right person at the right moment for the court. And, and after he talked to him, did you get any indication from the president of how he and his family are doing? This has been a grueling process. Well, I, I know uh, Judge Kavanaugh personally. I know his wife. It has been a very tough process. But one of the beauties of this family is the fact that, uh, as I think it was his wife uh, mentioned, you know, we need to pray for mercy and forgiveness. It's a moment in time where uh, it is putting those 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 battles behind. And but I will tell you, it's going to be very hard to forget what some of these mm. Democrats yeah. have done from the mm -hmm. beginning, where they made it their priority to resist, to ensure that this man would not make it to the court. And the way they did it in trying to destroy his reputation is completely uncalled and for. Mercy, let me uh, forgive the political reporter in me, but what do you think this means now looking to the midterms you know I think it's been this really has um, revealed a lot of on the Democrat side it's revealed a, a, a nastiness as you mentioned before that is it's is very unfortunate I, I mean as we've as a president's been traveling around the country uh, and just talking to people even around in this area women are really upset about mm -hmm. the fact that they have tried to destroy the reputation of, this, of Judge Kavanaugh, someone who is a father, you know, someone who's a husband, a son, someone who has dedicated his life to, to faith and public service, and yet <clears throat> they've, they've taken him, this one person, and, and try to just uh, destroy him by going back to high school, drunkenness, a yearbook. I mean, it, it makes you question whether anyone would want to put themselves in a yeah. position to serve in, in the government. I mean, Rachel, you know your husband serves in yeah. Congress. Politics is nasty, uh, but it's unfortunate that when we're talking about the Supreme Court, I mean, we had never treated Sotomayor or Kagan in that way, ever. We right. looked at her, their judicial opinions, and yes, we might not agree, but to go back and try to destroy Brett Kavanaugh and, and the long lasting effects that it will have on him and his family, I, it's just, I find it to be, this I, is not what we want in America. I think you're right. I think a lot of really bright legal minds are going to go, you know what, I think I might just get a big fat I paycheck um, right. in the private sector instead of public service. Let me ask you something else because you talked about women and I think it's really important. Um, women are upset. 
I think that the, com the way the conversation has been laid out by the left is about dividing men and women. I'm gonna tell you something that I just saw this morning that got me upset, I'd love to get your reaction. It's not just men and the division between men and women, but in a Time Magazine op-ed, um, they talked about um, dividing women from their children. They said, women who support Brett Kavanaugh are choosing their sons over their daughters. Wow. What do you say to that? Well, I'm the mother of five daughters, so Rachel, I can't really make that comparison because you could probably talk more to it than I can. But I will tell you what I think has happened during these past two weeks and just being able to talk to my 15-year-old and my 13-year-old. Yes, we've had conversations about uh, the, the hor horrors of sexual assault. We've had conversations about uh, making sure that you do the right thing, obviously, especially in these years that they're in high school, you have a daughter in college. Uh, but at the same time, we have to talk about the other side of this, which is about fairness and due process and the presumption of innocence, something that was completely lost in this process. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, my girls, they see it. They saw it very clearly um, when you know they watched the opening statement from Brett Kavanaugh. Uh, President Trump, did a, did, in sharing thoughts with him, was basically made the, the argument as well. He was a man who did the right thing. I would have been proud for Brett Kavanaugh to have been my son. He did all the right things went to the right schools, studied very hard, uh, you know, made it, was very successful in his career in public service. And yet the destructive tactics of the left, I think has last, ha created a very damaging effect, but we will rise above that. He will serve on the court. As he said, he'll be an independent and impartial judge. He's incredibly well respected in the legal circles. And I tell you, I think when it comes back to our children, this is a lesson for all of us that we should not allow that such destructive personal politics, character assassination politics, win at the end. What should win is due process. What should win is a presumption of innocence. That is what America stands for. <laughs> Nicely stated. Absolutely. Mercedes Schlapp, thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank Thanks you for so Mercedes. much. Thank you, Mercedes. You know, she's exactly right. That's why I was pointing out that Susan Collins moment said, when passions are inflamed, got to stand firm. Yep. All right on. Thank you, Griff. And um, some very sad news uh, in our headlines. The American soldier killed in Afghanistan has been identified. Army National Guard Specialist James, James Slate died after an IED went off in the Helmand province. He served in North Carolina's 60th Troop Command after joining in 2013. The 23-year-old was deployed in April and was expected to return home next spring. Slate was posthumously promoted to sergeant. A white Chicago police officer is convicted in the killing of a black teenager. A jury finding Jason Van Dyke guilty of second degree murder. He shot and killed 17 year old Laquan McDonald after responding to a 911 call about someone breaking into cars in 2014. Van Dyke also found guilty of 16 counts of aggravated battery for each bullet he shot at McDonald, captured in this police dash cam video. He faces a minimum of six years jail. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo arriving in Tokyo overnight for a meeting with Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, the top U.S. diplomat stopping in Japan just hours before heading to North Korea. Pompeo will leave for Pyongyang later today. Sorry about that one, a little it's a tough word. Uh, for critical talks with Kim Jong-un on denuclearizing the Korean Peninsula, Pompeo will wrap up his East Asia tour with stops in South Korea and China. And those are your headlines. Tell me the right way to say that word. Pyongyang. Pyongyang. Yep. I got, got it. it. All right. <laughs> How will Kavanaugh's confirmation impact the midterms, especially with Democrat Joe Manchin voting yes? We'll try to answer that question coming up next. Your favorite shows on Channel 114. Plus, every story, every 15 minutes. Fox News headlines 24 7, Channel 115. Welcome back. Well, Judge Brett Kavanaugh, one step closer to a Supreme Court confirmation. Three out of four undecided senators, including Democrat Joe Manchin, say they'll vote yes on the judge. So what will this mean for Senator Manchin going into the midterms? And will the partisan battle over Kavanaugh give Republicans the edge in the Senate? Here with more, Fox News senior Capitol Hill producer Chad Pergram. Chad, good morning. Thanks for being here. Good morning. Uh, Thanks we for get updates me. from you internally about what's happening uh, in, in the Senate and the House when no one else really knows what the process is. Anything we're missing right now about how this may unfold today? 
Yeah, one of the main things to talk about is the concept in the Senate of pairing votes or live pairs. We think we know how this vote is going to go down. It's expected to be 50 yeas, 48 nays, one present, Lisa Murkowski, and one absent, Steve Daines, the Republican from Montana. Here's what's happening. Here's how a pairing works. You have two senators who are on opposite sides of an issue. Now, Senator Daines is not going to be here. He supports Brett Kavanaugh. He's going to attend his daughter's wedding in Montana. Senator Murkowski is opposed. But uh, she wanted to do a, a favor for her friend here. So what happens, and it doesn't happen very often, uh, it's kind of a gentle person's agreement in the Senate. It doesn't happen, all, happen often, but they will pair their votes. And so when they call Senator Murkowski's name on the roll, she will rise. She will note that Senator Daines, had he been present, would vote yes. Uh, and she notes that she is a no, but she will not actually cast a no ballot. She will vote present. And so they pair off. And so she says, you know, it is a little confusing. But in the words of Senator Murkowski, when I talked to her late last night about this, she said, quote, everything we do here is kind of confusing. And, well, and so nice for, you know, him to be able to walk his daughter down. I mean, this is an important vote, but that's an important moment in a family's life. So very nice of her to do right. that. Chad, let me, let me just uh, quickly get you to the midterms. I mean, you know, in full disclosure, Chad is the brightest we have at Fox News, and I frequently uh, consult him when I am doing political reportings. But, I mean, for those of us that cover uh, all those members of Congress, this is going to have an impact on the midterms. What is your take on it? Well, it depends which side it energized. Uh, there's a lot of people who think this may have uh, supercharged the, the right because of the support for Brett Kavanaugh and maybe how they feel he was ill-treated by the Democrats. It was interesting just minutes after Joe Manchin, the Democrat from West Virginia, who's in a competitive race in a swing state this fall, his opponent, Patrick Morrissey, the Republican, put out a statement. I'm going to read this to you a little bit. He called Senator Manchin's decision to support Kavanaugh craven, and he was, quote, trying to save his career. Now, you can imagine what Patrick Morrissey might have said uh, had Joe Manchin decided to vote no. So, you know, Joe Manchin might not be in a in a in a win-win, lose-lose situation there, no matter how he would vote. But again, our polling has reported that uh, Manchin is ahead of Patrick Morrissey in West Virginia. But look at some other states. You know, uh, you look at Heidi Heitkamp from North Dakota. She is trailing Kevin Kramer, the mm. statewide Republican congressman there, and she decided to vote no. And it's not just because you're going to vote for Brett Kavanaugh that the Republicans suddenly call off the dogs on these uh, Democrats who are in tight races in Republican states this fall. All right. Thanks, Chad. And should anything My happen pleasure. to this vote, we expect a 452 change. We will quickly call you. Keep us Thank posted. you, sir. Certainly. Thanks, Chad. Thank you, Chad. All right. Sen Senator Shelley Moore Capito slamming the gavel following the dramatic vote, advancing Kavanaugh to, confirm, to confirmation. The West Virginia senator, she joins us next live. Welcome back. Some quick headlines for you. Mike, the situation will soon be behind bars. A judge sentencing the Jersey Shore star to eight months in prison and two years supervised release for tax evasion. Sorrentino must also pay a $10,000 fine. The reality TV star pleaded guilty to falsifying tax returns and concealing income. And Ryan Lochte is getting help for a drinking problem. TMZ reporting the 12-time Olympic swimming medalist is now seeking treatment after a drunken incident at a California hotel recently. Lochte made headlines two years ago after falsely claiming he was robbed at gunpoint after a night of drinking at the Summer Games in Brazil. Pete? Those are a couple of headlines. I, I give you guys the sports headlines. Give me the reality TV ones. You should have, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, it's the moment that set in motion the next phase of Judge Brett Kavanaugh's fate. On this vote, the yeas are 51, the noes are 49, the motion is agreed to. West Virginia Senator Shelley Moore Capito slamming the gavel, advancing Judge Kavanaugh to be confirmed as Supreme Court Justice. And she joins us now just hours before the big vote. Senator, good morning. Uh, it's going to be quite good a historic morning. day, isn't it? It is a very historic day. Yesterday certainly was, and I look forward to later this afternoon. Senator, you sat behind uh, Susan Collins when she gave her speech. You were there with the gavel. Did it really come down to the last minute? Was there doubt in that moment? You know, when I was seated uh, presiding over the vote, we really didn't know what several senators were going to do. So it became a very historic heightened tensions. Most of the senators are sitting at their seat voting, which is a rare occurrence. Usually we're huddled around the vote counter. And, and so I, I really took it all in. Uh, the galleries were full. The press mm. was there. Um, so it was a bit of a surprise, yes. Senator, there was a moment of that speech from Senator Collins when she said, when passions are most inflamed, it is fairness that is most in jeopardy. Your reaction to, to that? 
Well, I was just incredibly honored uh, to hear her speech, to learn so much from her just in that moment. But when when she talked about fairness and the presumption of innocence and uh, the, the tenets of our democracy, her, her speech was so well researched, well delivered and so powerful that I think when it comes right down to us, the fairness uh, aspect of what we've seen moving forward is why I think Brett Kavanaugh will be confirmed later this afternoon. We just had your colleague, Senator, on um, Senator Hyde Smith, and she said that there was an intention to stand, stand behind her um, as sort of a sisterhood of conservative women. Really nice to see that happening in such an important moment because it has been a difficult week. And I wanted to ask you um, about another colleague of yours, Senator Cory Booker, who was caught on tape saying to activists, get up in their faces and was called out by another senator's wife, um, uh, uh, Rand Paul's wife saying, come on, this is not the right way you know, to do this. We're already in heightened times. There has been violence against uh, members of Congress. Do you feel safe? And what do you think about what Cory Booker said in, in this environment? Well, quite honestly, the last several weeks have been very eye-opening to me. I've been on Capitol Hill for several years now, and I've never felt um, that the safety aspects of us traveling to do our job back and forth to the to the Capitol or meet with our constituents was uh, as tenuous as it was this last week. And so I think extra precautions, I certainly made extra precautions for myself to make sure that I was you know, not alone and had, had people around me to help me if I, if I found myself. I was yelled at in the halls and all that. I mean, I don't want to give up anybody's right to yell at me or tell me what they think because that's the way America was founded. But we've got to have, we cannot incite people to get up yeah. in faces, yeah. to, to become um, so aggressive that their frustrations may lead them to do something that maybe they didn't intend to do in the beginning, and then it gets physical, and then somebody's going to get hurt. Yeah, that's Somebody is going to get hurt. <clears throat> no, you're right. You're for, Senator, you're from West Virginia. Your I fellow am. senator is Joe Manchin. He says he will vote for Brett Kavanaugh. Uh, you have endorsed his opponent, Republican. What's this going to mean for that race and constituents back home? Well, I think that uh, it will put a different spin on the race. I think that uh, I have endorsed Patrick Morrissey because uh, I want somebody who plays on the same team with me that would vote for tax reform and other things. Uh, I am good friends with Senator Manchin. And, uh, and no matter what happens, I think our friendship will stay intact. But I think um, it's a close race. It's going to be a close race. As we know, the president uh, is very well beloved in our state. He's been there twice. I expect him to come back. And so I think it'll go right down to the wire. Mm -hmm. It certainly will, Absolutely. just like the vote. Senator, Thanks, thank you Senator. very much for your time. Shelley Moore Capital, we appreciate thank it. Thank you all. All right, you got it. thank you. Now, Brett Kavanaugh's confirmation today will be another win for President Trump. And Ed Henry is here to weigh in on this historic day in Washington. Now he's here, now he's what? right there. <laughs> now he's here. Now he's, oh, he missed me. Well, come on. <laughs> mob was not able to intimidate the Senate. We stood up to the mob. We did the right thing for a good man. I filled a lifetime appointment on the Supreme Court. There's a lot to celebrate today. I couldn't be prouder of all of my members. That was Majority Leader Mitch McConnell last night on the Ingram Angle. Joining us now, Ed Henry, Fox News Chief. You know, I was trying to sleep in. I wasn't supposed to work. Management called me. They woke me up and said, you gotta go take Pete's temperature. Something's wrong. He's saying nice things about Mitch McConnell. <laughs> you, we might have to make a switch because we think he's sick or something. And Susie Collins. He and loves Susie the swamp. Listen, all of a I, said, I said it earlier. Mitch McConnell ate a Snickers <laughs> and he brought his A game. You gotta give him his due. I was listening on Sirius XM and I didn't understand the Snickers joke, but now I get it. Well, uh, I was trying the, to keep up. Here's yeah. the thing, though. Mitch, and, and I want to yep. get your take on it. I mean, uh, Mitch McConnell blocked Merrick Garland shepherded in Neil Gorsuch, yeah. and now it will be... We always hear about Merrick Garland. Number one, that was a presidential election year. Joe Biden, as a Democratic senator, who said, can't do this in presidential election years. Democrats forget that. Uh, number two, uh, as I recall in covering then-President Obama, the Republicans allowed, I believe, two 
Supreme Court justices to go through in midterm election years like we have now. And they, by the way, they went by bigger margins than this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As Lindsey Graham said. And, and that, with no threats of sexual assault and, and, and games Or impeaching or the else. person after right. they're on and, and all of that. And here's another thing. Mitch McConnell said something very important in the middle of this process. He said, we're going to plow through this. And Democrats lied, basically. They said, he's talking about plowing over this woman who's accusing uh, Judge Kavanaugh about sexual assault. No, he was talking about plowing through the process, sure. obviously. He wasn't, and it was taken out of context. And he was saying, I, I, you know, they're coming after me, but we're going to get this done. And the other point I'd make about that when I, when I was talking about what happened in the Obama years and, and talking about Merrick Garland, what about what Harry Reid did? Harry Reid sure. is the one who yeah. changed this and opened the door for President Trump to get this through with just 51 votes uh, instead of 60 votes, number one. And I found it, this got lost in all the controversy this week, but Chuck Schumer's actually asked, if you guys take back the majority in November, will you bring it back to 60 votes? He didn't say yes or no, but he said, we're going to look at that. Yeah. Yeah, You're we'll going to look at that now? First of all, probably, it's not going to happen. Yeah. No. But second of all, Democrats started that. Of course. Yeah. And it's backfired. Griff, I mean, Ed, Griff made a good point as we were preparing for the show. It almost feels like Mitch McConnell learned this is, Republican Party is the party of Trump, whereas Paul Ryan never really got that memo, right? right. And so in the, in the Senate, you've seen that change where he's embraced the president's agenda and has fought for and it. And I teach you about Mitch McConnell because you're always taking on the swamp and all that. Yeah. Uh, and you've been right on, on some of these issues. And, and But I w what I would point out is Mitch McConnell hasn't just plowed through with two Supreme Court picks and helped the president reshape the court, which is a big, big deal, obviously. But think about the tax cuts. Yep. Think about yeah. this economy. That's lost in what happened yesterday. Yeah. We got another jobs report yesterday that shows the economy is rocking right now. Yep. And, and by the way, going back to your point. I'm about, happy to eat crow anytime I, I need to. <laughs> yeah, and I'm just teasing you. So going to your point about Mitch McConnell, the the sort of the grease in that wheel might be uh, Senator McConnell's wife who worked for Donald Trump. I mean, usually there's a woman behind a lot of this kind of stuff. Well, I'm and glad she, you mentioned her because yeah. you remember with all these protests you were just talking about with Senator Moore Capito. Remember that video a few months ago when, when this was really starting to heat up with Russia? Oh, yes. I love that Elaine video. Elaine Chow said, you stay away from my oh, husband. Oh, boy. She She's, was a yeah. mama bear As and a she fought secretary, back. As a cabinet she said, you get out of the way. She wasn't scared. She pushed the security out of the way. Stay away from my husband. She stood strong. Yeah, yeah. we need more of her out with these <laughs> protesters. <laughs> and how does, this, how does this all cut in the midterm? Energy enthusiasm. The energy's on the Republican side right now. There's polling data. That's not just me talking. I mean, look at that Fox poll a couple days back that was suggesting that in a place like North Dakota, it looks like High Camp is a goner. And she yeah. just finally said, look, I'm likely to lose. I'm going to stick with my party. I'm going to stick with Democrats on this. But I, I think Democrats are going to be deflated coming out of this. They put everything into this, yeah. which is why now that they've lost this, they're saying, well, if he's on, let's impeach him. True. Come I, on. I Democrats, mean, Democrats are uh, likely still to their favor to take the House back. Yeah, and we absolutely. were seeing uh, Jerry Nadler, who is the ranking member, the Democrat of the House Judiciary Committee, essentially saying, well, we're going to have to investigate uh, uh, Judge Kavanaugh. Because now. what they're doing is they're saying, and they, they use this word, it's not mine. He's not going to be a legitimate Supreme Court We've been Court hearing justice. that all they over the press yesterday. Trump. Where they, we heard that before, exactly. They yeah. said that about Donald Trump in January 2017. And what happened in January 2017 with the Women's March and Madonna and let's go blow up the White House and all that crazy rhetoric. Now you see the Women's March turning on Susan Collins, who's with the Democrats at least half the time on some of these big issues. But that statement they put out, I don't want to repeat some of the stuff they're yeah. saying about how she's an apologist for rape and all of this nonsense. Crazy. They are turning on their own. It's un And so to answer your question as well about heading into the midterms, no, none of us know where the energy is really going to be. But boy, when Democrats are turning on their own, uh, that's not good. But, for uh, there could be a lesson in Wisconsin. When the left acted like this after uh, 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 Scott Walker passed Act 10, mm -hmm. when he had to run again, and it, it, they voted for him in greater numbers. And I think it was a lot of independents and Democrats who were very frustrated with the process and the way he was treated, coming back and saying, we're going to vote against the way you're Susan treated. Collins made another important point, which plays into right what you said, which is that she said Democrats overplayed their hands. She went That's after right. them about leaking Dr. Ford's name and all of that. Susan Collins, as a moderate, fairly looked at this and said Democrats overplayed She was the right yeah. messenger for that message. Good point. Absolutely. Great to see you guys. Ed, Great seeing you, Pete, too, hope Ed. you feel better. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I'll crack this open while she <laughs> He's getting his the other half of my Snickers That's right. Card. As you said, I'm going to get my Mitch on, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right, we've got some headlines for you. A murder suspect is behind bars at, after an intense seven-day manhunt. Police finding Kirby Wallace in the woods north of Nashville, Tennessee. Officers spotting the fugitive while hiding behind deer blinds, waiting for the right time to move in. He was armed with a loaded handgun, 
but Wallace peacefully surrendered. The 53-year-old is accused of a deadly home invasion and shooting a man to death. A deadly car explosion is ruled a murder-suicide after police receive letters from a father admitting to the blast. Jacob, Jacob Showmoyer detailing his plan before killing himself. His two-year-old son and a friend in Pennsylvania in the note. The 26-year-old described living an unhappy life and how he made the bomb to put in the console of his car. Police say he intentionally detonated it while they were all sitting in the vehicle. President Trump's proposed Space Force has been mocked by many, but one of our nation's leading astronomers says the idea is not so crazy. I remember recommending a Space Force in 2001. It's not a crazy idea. A lot of Trump haters want to hate everything that comes out of Trump's mouth. Neil deGrasse Tyson saying President Trump's proposed Space Force is an important step towards protecting our nation. And those are your headlines. I like the Space Force. I love it. Sounds fun. I love it. I wonder what Rick Regney thinks about the Space Force. Is there weather in space, Rick? Would we need... <laughs> do you know what? Like you guys do to me all the time, I wasn't paying attention to you. Oh, really? Ah. I didn't even hear what you were we talking, were talking about. talking about the Space Force. I want to know, is there weather in space? Uh, uh, not our kind of weather. Okay. But there is <laughs> intergalactic weather. Yeah, there you go. Hey, um, I just accused this guy because you've got two signs to say you like us in different colors. I thought maybe he's replacing other TV shows or other channels down below. No, we love you. It's just us? <laughs> just uh, you. It's, like, it's just a, it's, it's a monogamous relationship. Absolutely. All right, very good. We're glad to see that. Hey, also, real guys, what's going on over here? Pete? Whoa. Do you know. have any idea? No, I have no idea. Is what that, is that? Are they putting up Christmas lights? Well, that's that seems too soon. Too early. I Can't do that like before that. Thanksgiving. I, I have no idea what's going on, but I don't know that I'll come I approve out and inspect. At this at all. <laughs> they're not orange, they're red. All right, let's talk a little bit of weather real quick. I'm sure they're about to wrap me because I've talked too long already. Take a look at the map, show you what's going on. Here's your temps as you're waking up. A big cold front right across the central part of the country, and that's where we've got all of our action. The east, you're looking pretty good. I got the wrap because I talked too long. There you go. Big rain across the central plains. More flooding concerns as this doesn't move, at least for about the next four to five days. All right, guys, back to you inside. Well done. All right. Thankfully, Thanks, you're Rick. interesting, you, Rick. Rick. So going on as long as you want. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, sir. <laughs> All right. What does one of Brett Kavanaugh's lifelong friends think about his expected appointment to the Supreme Court? She joins us next. You don't want to miss it. Also joining us live, Louisiana Senator Bill Cassidy and Dean Kane. I heard he's in the building. Coming up. Can't wait. Welcome back. Couple of quick headlines. If you drink LaCroix, listen up. I will reluctantly admit that I do on occasion. Well, a new lawsuit now claiming that popular drink advertised as 100% all natural actually may contain a number of artificial ingredients, including the same ingredient found in cockroach insecticide. The company says the allegations are false, and I think going with today's theme, you should be innocent until proven guilty. I agree with that. Well, I'll keep drinking it. All right, and apparently vitamin D supplements aren't that great for you. A new study found they do not improve bone health or prevent fractures. Researchers also saying a higher or lower dose of vitamin D doesn't matter because the effects remain the same. Haven't we yet learned that all these studies, they ultimately canceled themselves out. You should just eat whatever you want to eat. Vitamin D is very good for nursing moms. Okay. So let's let's revisit that later. <laughs> okay. So, anyway. so we're putting a question mark on both those headlines. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right. Judge Brett Kavanaugh expected to be confirmed at 4.52 p.m. as Supreme Court Justice this afternoon, thanks in part to this passionate speech from Senator Susan Collins touting his career and character. Joining us now with reaction is someone who has known him for nearly 38 years, Julie Duvall. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning to you. So what do you make of everything that's happening? I mean, you know him well. Um, you, the process is almost to an end. How is he doing? How is the family doing? Well, I think everybody's going to be a lot happier when the end of the day happens today. Yeah, uh, no doubt. No doubt about what that. Was it, what was it inside that crucible? Uh, it, and again, it's, it's mostly him and his family, but supporters of his, like yourself, have been uh, attacked and maligned also. And what's it like to been to stand in that firing line this week, the metaphorical firing line? It's easy to stick by somebody who you know is innocent and is a great person. And uh, there's a, a big group of us that went to the Senate the other day, went to visit various offices and hundreds of letters were written in support of Brett, people that have known him personally over the years. And we delivered them to different senators' offices. 
and um, it, it, it was a success, I hope. Julie, uh, we, you have been here. Thank you for coming on. I know everybody's really tired, uh, those that have been supporting him, but have you had a chance to speak with Judge Kavanaugh uh, or his wife about Senator Collins giving that speech and talking about fairness prevailing? Uh, I have not spoken with him about it. I've spoken with people that have spoken with him, and we are so grateful to Senator Flake, Senator Manchin, and Senator Collins. She was an inspiration. It was an amazing speech, and people can't stop talking about it. You said that um, this whole process, especially the, the culmination yesterday with Senator Collins, you said it was um, the vindication of good over evil. Um, but has this process caused you to lose faith in our government in some ways? Uh, for a little while it did, but I think we're going to come back, and I think it's going to be fine. Yeah. Julie, no, I mean, go ahead. Well, I just I was just saying, following up on that a little bit, do you believe that this will make uh, qualified, good people uh, think twice yeah. about being nominated and, and stepping forward? I was very worried about that because he's got the best character, and if he can be taken down, a anybody can be taken down. Who in the world would want to go through that? Uh, but... I'm hoping, I've got my fingers crossed, that good people will still want to go out and, and run for public office. Julie, there's one note that stuck out at us. The former friend of Dr. Ford and witness uh, alleged, Leland Kaiser says she felt pressured by Democrats and folks on the left to change her story uh, you know, while the pressure was mounting. Would that surprise you? Um, I can't speak to that. I just can say kudos to Leland for sticking to the truth and telling her truth. That, uh, that shows volumes up for her character as well. Well, yeah. and Julie, let me just, while we're you know, approaching this historic vote, why don't you have the last word in telling America who Brett Kavanaugh is? He is one of the most kind, decent human beings. He has been since high school to the present day. And the women that have supported him have known him from high school through now. They're his neighbors, they go to church with him. Uh, they worked with him at the White House, and we all say the same thing. Uh, he is absolutely incapable of doing what he was accused of doing. And um, it, it, it was a smear campaign, and he needs to get his good name back. He deserves it, and um, I can't wait to celebrate with him. I hope, mm. I'm praying that it all, everything works out, and at 5 o'clock we have some great news. Well, I'm sure he's very grateful to have friends like you who have stuck with him through this whole process. Your testimony has been important um, to to be a witness to his character. Yeah. So thank you for joining us. Julie, thank, thank you very much. much. Thank you for having me. We're all so proud of him. All right. Thank you. Take care. All right. You too. Now, Senator Susan Collins ripping apart the confirmation process as she announced her support for the judge. Greg Jarrett says it was the finest speech he has ever seen on the Senate floor. And he's going to join us next live. Stay with us. So dysfunctional. It looks more like a caricature of a gutter level political campaign. Today, we have come to the conclusion of a confirmation process that has become so dysfunctional. It looks more like a caricature of a gutter level political campaign than a solemn occasion. And here to react to that speech is Fox News legal analyst and author of the best-selling The Russia Hoax, Greg Jarrett. Greg, you call this the finest speech you've ever heard? Yeah, I mean, and I've been covering Capitol Hill and speeches on the floor of the Senate and the House for, you know, the better part of four decades. And with uncommon eloquence and sound reasoning, I thought that was the best speech on the floor of the Senate that I've seen. Uh, and it was important that she began by condemning the outrageous behavior, the character assassination, and the smears of special interest groups, activists, protesters, as well as some Democrats, which she made it abundantly clear backfired on them here's, as so far as her vote is concerned. Here's some of that. Let's play that so people know what you're talking about. I vote on the nomination. The president nominated Brett Kavanaugh on July 9th. 
Within moments of that announcement, special interest groups raced to be the first to oppose him. A number of senators joined the race to announce their opposition, but they were beaten to the punch by one of our colleagues who actually announced opposition before the nominee's identity was even known. So preemptive resistance. Yeah, I mean, that was a great line among many great lines in her lengthy speech. But she said something very important, that fundamental fairness and presumption of innocence yes. is relevant to advise and consent duty of the United States Senate. And she set what I think is a sort of a new standard for judging accusations, more likely than not, which lawyers, as you know, uh, call uh, preponderance of the evidence in civil right. cases. There has to be some established standard. And she said the standard was not met. And by the way, that's the lowest possible standard. Wise words, will they be heeded? You know, it's hard to know. I do think that there ought to be a couple of investigations. The Senate Ethics Committee needs to look into Dianne Feinstein's conduct in concealing vital information. And as you know, I wrote a column uh, saying that there is significant evidence that the lawyers for Professor Ford were not acting in her best interests, but in the okay. interests of Democrats. And those lawyers who are Democratic operatives and activists were recommended by Dianne Feinstein, and it appears they never communicated to their client that she could have avoided the spectacle by having a private confidential interview with female FBI agents hmm. or the staff That's of the Judiciary Committee. That's a breach of yeah. ethics. Greg, we right. gotta leave it there, thanks. More Thank Fox you. and Friends on the other side. Most people